Thank you for spending time with me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. This here powerful hurricane Flossie near the coast of southern Mexico. Winds right now are roughly around 90 miles per hour. Some of the gusts as high as 120, 125 miles per hour, 200 kilometers an hour. Fortunately, the hurricane winds are sitting just offshore. So I want to cover Flossie, some life-threatening flooding, no doubt, and mudslides possible parts of Mexico. Then there is this. This area here, development's a little bit more likely now uh, uh, near the southeast coast of the U.S., just north of the Bahamas by the time we get into the upcoming weekend. I want to show you the German icon model, which has really a good feel on what could happen right in this area here. So we'll cover that as well in this video. And then new tropical waves moving through the Caribbean. Now, as we go through the Caribbean the next few days, I'm going to be watching off toward the east. That's where we have some bigger tropical waves. Look at this. Here we are in Barbados, down through Trinidad, over towards St. Lucia and Dominica. We look over here. These tropical waves are now hanging together some. Do I expect them to totally hang together? No, I don't. Uh, but as it's still the start of hurricane season. But as we get deeper into July, uh, we're going to see more and more of these hanging together and moving in. And that's when we'll start to see some signs of development. So it's normal to get some development. Hopefully nothing uh, comes near land for the uh, most part. I'll be watching all of that, no doubt. But again, watching these stronger tropical waves. Now let's go step by step. Let's shift back to this area, back toward the southeast coast of the U.S. The uh, American model and the German icon model have this area developing into some sort of uh, uh, sloppy uh, tropical depression or tropical storm. A tropical depression is right below a tropical storm. Then you'd have a tropical storm and then a hurricane just to kind of give you uh, the uh, strength of these things. So uh, even the European and Canadian model at times does see some sort of development here. This is kind of typical for early in the hurricane season. We're just a month in. It's just started. Uh, with that said, sometimes you get sloppy uh, systems that try to develop. So let's start here with the possibility of some development. Then I'll cover Flossie and the new tropical wave sliding in for us in the uh, Caribbean. And then I want to show you a widen out across the U.S. to show you more of that monsoon flow moving in and even some stronger storms that will be possible parts of the northeast and mid-Atlantic. But it's this front moving across the eastern seaboard. You see it heading toward Bermuda. This here is by Thursday, so we're jumping a couple days out in time. It will leave some moisture just north of the Bahamas, near Florida, near Georgia, and the Carolinas. You get that leftover moisture over the really warm water, it's a spot to watch, and that's what we'll be doing throughout the week. Does it form in the Northeast Gulf, or does it form off the uh, Southeast Coast of the U.S.? It's looking a little bit more likely now off the Southeast Coast of the U.S. And you see here, this would be by Friday, a blob of rain. It's not showing anything crazy, right? Keeping everything in perspective, uh, but a blob of rain somewhere in here. And then by uh, Friday and Saturday, even near the Northern Bahamas and Florida, you see a lot of that rain that's just kind of building in. That's when something could start to develop, start to kind of spin. I'll show you that with the uh, uh, German model in just a second. And you see here, then kind of lifting up to the north as we work our way into Sunday. So uh, as far as what this could be, where it could go, it's really just an area to watch. Um, which is typical, as I mentioned, this time of year. Kind of a sloppy rainmaker somewhere in here. And then we'll, I'll, I'll let you know in plenty of advanced time if something were to spin up stronger, say, into a significant tropical storm. I'm not seeing that, uh, but if something does, I will let you know on this channel. So again, thank you for subscribing. Now, here's the German icon model, and it seems to have a good feel. This model did a very good job with some of the storms last year, including Hurricane Barrel, which we were dealing with last year at this uh, time, showing some of the rain over toward Honduras and Nicaragua, and we'll see these new tropical waves sliding into the Caribbean. But let's go out in time here. This here is by Thursday, and you could see on Thursday, there's that area of rain. All of the models are showing this, including the European model and the Canadian model. Here's that extra rain, just like I showed you in the uh, uh, American model. So this is on Thursday. Now let's go out in time here further as we get into the uh, weekend, ticking the clock ahead. This here, we'll stop the clock on Friday. Then you see by Friday, here's that rain that is just building near Florida, the Bahamas, close to Georgia, mainly just off to the east. Some sort of little circulation trying to develop uh, in there. If something were to develop, could be a big kind of sloppy rainmaker as we work our way, especially into the upcoming weekend. So let's go out in time here a little bit further. Uh, this here is by Saturday and showing some kind of broad spin trying to work back toward the coast, which could mean if this were to kind of develop some, 
from. That could mean additional rain for parts of South Carolina, Georgia, Florida as we work our way into Saturday. Maybe some tropical storm-like conditions with some of that rain feeding in through the Florida Keys back through the northern Bahamas. So uh, it, it's tricky. Is something going to develop or not develop? It's really, again, just an area that we are going to watch together at this time. Fortunately, I'm not seeing anything uh, overnight. I've been watching everything this morning as well. I'm not seeing anything jumping out at me that's uh, super alarming. So that's some good news. Now here's the European model, just kind of painting in this yellow shading in here, saying about a 30 to 40% chance of some development. So that's it. We're going to watch it. And I'll, I'll have a really good handle on this in tomorrow's video. If something looks like it's going to develop, uh, I'll have a good feel on that in tomorrow's video, and then we'll we'll go from there. Also, just kind of, we're not going to see development out here off the coast of Africa, but I showed you those stronger tropical waves. Uh, the European model is hinting at some of those just trying to hang together. Now, here are those water temperatures. Right in through here, near the Bahamas up toward uh, North Carolina, for example, you have the Gulf Stream. Really warm water temps running well into the 80s in through here. So if you get a blob of rain sitting over here, no doubt something could try to develop just feeding off of that very warm water. Now we swing back here into the Caribbean, then we'll get it to Flossie, and then I'll widen out the view. Two tropical waves moving in, but there's not a lot with them initially, but we are going to see the rain building again in Central America. Costa Rica, heavy rain building the next few days. You see that? Parts of Panama, parts of Nicaragua, so heavy rain. Jamaica, uh, over toward the DR, parts of uh, Puerto Rico, hit or miss storms. Like the last few days, some of us completely dry dry and super hot, right? But others getting some thunderstorms around. So we'll see this tropical wave bringing that moisture to Central America. The other one just hit or miss showers. St. Kitts and Nevis, Antigua, Barbuda, uh, passing showers possible back through Trinidad and Grenada. Now the tropical wave that moves into Central America first, that's going to build in the Eastern Pacific. Another named storm will be developing in the Eastern Pacific where it has been so active on the heels of Flossie. We'll see another system. And on Friday, there are the hit or miss showers, but by Friday, I want to keep an eye on these tropical waves out here in the Atlantic to see how much of those hang together for us, for Dominica, uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Trinidad, to see how much rain may eventually move in. Now, swinging back to Flossie, I showed you that right at the beginning of this video, the really strong winds, the center of it, though, sitting offshore, that is the good news. But like I showed you for days and days now, uh, even with the center offshore, that is throwing a lot of rain back into parts of Mexico. That's the issue. You have really higher terrain in here really splitting uh, Puerto Vallarta uh, back toward uh, Zewantaneo. That's where we're going to see some tropical storm conditions. That's why we went into action mode days ago, giving you the advance warning. That's why I do this channel. You can see the center offshore, but those bands of rain just working in, hitting the higher terrain. That is a mudslide threat, no doubt, right in through the southwest coast of Mexico, even by tomorrow. Now, Cabo San Lucas, you're watching over toward the Baja. As I've been mentioning, as this lifts up to the north, there will be weakening still this time of year as it lifts in latitude as it goes to the north there is some relatively cooler water so we're going to see some weakening but it could draw in a slug of some moisture uh, through the uh, the Gulf of California here just kind of working in some of that rain back toward Mexico some additional rain then you see it fall apart but by Friday we'll be tracking another developing system that is likely to follow a similar path as Flossie and eventually as well become a hurricane now shifting to the north this here, catching your eye, strong to even severe storms and flooding possible. Mid-Atlantic today, parts of the Southeast U.S., this is the front that is going to help leave that leftover moisture in parts of the Gulf and over toward the Western Atlantic that could eventually develop. Scattered areas of rain, especially back through the Rocky Mountains, that monsoon flow, isolated storms, watching out for some flooding in through here. By tomorrow, some stronger storms. Outer Banks of North Carolina, back through Delmarva, could see a couple stronger storms. There's the flow that feed of moisture, Arizona and New Mexico, even watching Southern Texas, there's Flossie weakening. But as we work our way into Thursday, we'll get a better chance of rain. Parts of New England and then over toward Nova Scotia, uh, Newfoundland, we'll see a better chance of some rain on Thursday. There's that moisture again feeding in with some storms through the Rocky Mountains. Here's that front that is going to leave that leftover moisture. And this is the spot we'll be watching through the end of the week and the weekend for that potential of development. Now getting back toward Flossie, as 
as it kind of stays offshore and weakens, it will throw some of that rain up to the north. I did just want to show you some of the models, and it's going to continue to strengthen. That's why I mentioned those really higher gusts uh, over the next 24 hours. So fortunate that the center is offshore with this one uh, because we'll see additional strengthening, and then we'll get some weakening as it enters some of the cooler water. Look at the seas though. Heads up as we work our way into the Central Caribbean. Uh, stronger seas, gusty winds with that tropical wave moving through Jamaica and the Cayman Islands for us. South side of Jamaica, we have elevated to rough seas, windy conditions, and watching some of those Atlantic passageways. But those seas are elevated today and tomorrow, Central, and Western Caribbean. Things are going to be a little bit choppier as we go forward in time here. This is by the weekend, this new area developing in the Eastern Pacific, and we'll see what tries to develop here. Seas are going to be elevated. Uh, Northern Bahamas up toward the Carolinas. Uh, I, I don't think the models have a really good handle on the seas here. I think they'll be a little bit more elevated than this. We'll watch out for some development in that spot. So as far as the rain goes, watching some of the heavier rain parts of the Southeast U.S. clipping by the Northern Bahamas as that new front works in. That's the area we'll watch for development. Elsewhere, it's spotty. Some of us completely dry. Eastern end of Cuba, though, we could get a couple storms. Hit or miss storms, Cayman Islands, Jamaica, not as much in Haiti. Uh, DR, we could get a passing shower. Same thing, Puerto Rico, and back through the U.S. British Virgin Islands. And of course, if we get a thunderstorm, we could get a quick 50 millimeters of rain or uh, two inches of rain. Uh, very sparse, St. Martin, St. Bastatia. Uh, rain chance stays kind of limited. Spotty in nature, Dominica South, back through St. Lucia, Barbados. Barbados and uh, Trinidad, but it's those tropical waves that we're going to be watching later this week uh, near the coast of Africa and in the central Atlantic. We'll see how much of those hang together. Northern Guyana, some higher rain totals, at least 75 millimeters of some rain. This is that pocket near Nicaragua, Costa Rica in particular western end of Panama, we'll get some totals over 150 millimeters of rain, six to eight inches of rain. So my friends in Costa Rica, uh, leave your comments. Uh, and let me know what's going on, of course, safely, no doubt, with some of the flooding over the next few days. There's that slug of moisture with Flossy, but just kind of feeding in that monsoon flow. You see western Texas getting a few inches of rain possible, and even watching parts of uh, New Mexico for an inch or two of some rain. This here, the scattered stuff, this is that front that is going to leave some of that rain that could develop by the time we get into the end of the week and the upcoming weekend. So Jamaica, we have about a 30% chance of a shower or storm, 20 to 30% chance for us in the Cayman Islands. It's not super high, uh, but a passing shower will be a possibility. 30% chance of a shower today in Trinidad, about a 40% chance for us uh, tomorrow. So slightly higher chance, but the rain chance not super high. Thursday, we'll have about a 40% chance uh, back through Barbados. Same thing in St. Lucia. So a limited chance of rain, slightly higher as we work work our way through the end of the week, 20 to 30% chance in Grenada. The next couple of days, St. Vincent and the Grenadines could see a passing shower. Rain chance stays limited in Martinique, only a 20% chance over the next couple of days in Dominica, 30% chance of an isolated shower in Guadeloupe, and the rain chance staying on the low side, Antigua and Barbuda, we're looking at a 20 to 30% chance. 20% chance today, St. Kitts and Nevis and Montserrat, and a 20% chance today in Guilla and St. Bart's. We'll have that uh, isolated shower, St. Martin's Saba and Stacia. About a 20 to 30 percent chance. A couple spotty showers possible as we swing back through Puerto Rico. 20 to 30 percent chance of a passing shower. St. Croix back through uh, Tortola. Bahamas though, especially the northern Bahamas, that's where we have a better chance of rain. Freeport and New Providence. I'll be watching out for any signs of development by the end of the week. Turks and Caicos rain chance at about 20 percent and a 30 to 40 percent chance as we get across the Dominican Republic. Rain chance meanwhile in Haiti over toward Jacques Mel, Boston Blue only a 20% chance. Belize, 30 to 40% chance of some spotty showers and storms for us. 20% chance in Aruba as the tropical waves move in. Not a lot of moisture with it, but Carousel over toward Bonaire, we may get a, a passing shower. Northern Guyana, that's where we'll have some heavier rain. Rain chance running at about 50 to 60% as we work our way through Suriname. 30 to 40% chance of a shower storm in Cuba, building in Costa Rica. Really heavy rain moving in over the next two days and part of Nicaragua, especially closer to the Caribbean. 50% chance of rain back through Honduras. 70% chance the next couple of days, Guatemala and El Salvador. 60 to 70% chance in and around Mexico City. 30% chance across the Yucatan Peninsula passing shower. Northern Colombia rain chance 40%, about a 50% chance northern Venezuela. Interior sections of Colombia and Venezuela, uh, the flooding will persist. Interior zones, higher chance of flooding. And then we'll see these fronts getting closer 
by the end of the week to Bermuda. So an old front will bring down some of that rain through the southeast U.S. That's where we could see some development. New tropical waves. I showed you some of those stronger ones out in the Atlantic. We'll monitor that. And Flossie over the next 24 hours continues to get stronger in the Pacific. Thank you for being part of this weather community. I hope you have a really good day ahead.